it's the mud all over, going all over our legs, up on our arms, across our chest. It's probably smeared on my face as well. How did we get to be covered in infectious mud in the deepest cave in the Dominican Republic? This is the story of the exploration of Catana Matias Cave. I'm Lucas. I've been traveling the world in caving for most of my life. Together with my wife, Suhei, we look for and map caves in remote settings, especially in the tropics. We learned of the deepest cave in the Dominican Republic in 2022. We heard it was almost 400 meters deep and not fully explored. Only an Italian team of three cavers had ever entered, spending just three days exploring it and left an incomplete map. We threw a rock which fell for 14 seconds and knew we had to return. We organized a trip and returned with 10 cavers from the US, Mexico, and Costa Rica in January 2023. The cave is in a remote area. Access requires an extremely rough dirt road. And we're going up to the cave, which is only a 15 minute walk from the road, but the reason that it remains unexplored is because the road is awful. <laughs> we rented off-road vehicles specifically for this road and had a ton of problems with these vehicles en route. No prende. Base camp was the stunning village of Catana Matias. We camped on the property of a local man named Wilson and we thank him profusely. The village of around 100 people has no running water, electricity, or any other amenities. The local people in Catana Matias are welcoming and supportive of us foreigners coming in to explore their cave. In return for their support and hospitality, we shared all data, photos, and maps with them. It was important to leave a good impression and treat the locals with respect. A local guy named Negrito was instrumental in organizing and supporting the expedition. We can't thank him enough. There's a ton of cave entrances in the area, but none of them go more than about 100 meters, as far as we know, except for Catana Matias Cave. The cave has a dramatic entrance, which is invisible until you're right in front of it due to thick tree cover. Entrance is pretty much an abyss. A slip is certain death. Locals have wondered for decades what's actually in this cave. Locals joke that there's a palm tree of solid gold deep in the cave. This is a legend that's been passed down through generations. The entrance drops 500 feet to a boulder field. Here we found a small tube that continues. Suhei and myself led the mapping efforts for the entire cave. From the Italian's very basic trip report, we believed that at some point we'd reach a rushing river which would be difficult to cross. They found it impossible to cross, but said there was continuing passage on the other side. Minus 150 meters, 15 repels in, maybe 12 repels in. Uh, Suhei is now coming up this incredible stream pit. Despite our efforts, we were unable to find anything resembling a raging river. It may have been the time of year, or it may have just been a false claim. We spent several days exploring the deepening network of tubes that brought us to several sumps. Hauling in full diving gear for two divers took the efforts of the entire team. We suspected the sumps would continue to dry passage. And they did continue to dry passage, which continued even more. Unfortunately, the dry passages had a surprise for us. They were filled with unbreathable bad air. We were unable to continue. But there was one more passage that we had to check. 
We're at one of the deepest parts of Katana Matias Cave. There is a swim here. Water's cold. Some people are gonna do it naked. The smarter of us are gonna try it on an air tube. <laughs> Where we have to cross this lake is like 50 meters long. So he's really brave, but I'm really smart and I'm gonna use this inner tube. Um, and we are also at this moment the deepest tubers in the Dominican Republic. The water in this pond was so dirty that one member who ended up with leptospirosis in the hospital after the trip probably got it from this pond. This was the great lepto bath. After this came a bolt climb. We're just about at the deepest part of the cave about the farthest point, um, past so many repels, rebelays, nine of us cavers used a lot of skills and equipment and effort to get here. Um, and we didn't think anyone else had been here. And turns out the, the team of three Italians with a single scuba tank must have reached this point in the 90s because there's a bolt, look at this. And we're, we're on a bolt climb that we climbed and bolted and uh, we were just really shocked to see this. We thought we were in Virgin Passage, but uh, the Italians beat us to it. After the bolt climb came an unfortunate surprise again. Here we are in the terminal sump of Catamana Mateos. And uh, the air is okay here. Um, a little farther down, the air is not so great, so we're Stopping it here. If you listen, you can actually hear a waterfall off in the distance. Um, as you can see it right from here, the, the lake. Exploration ended right here. Uh, we came to Catana Matias Cave 30 years after the Italians. We didn't get any farther than them, and possibly not even as far. However, we did produce a precise map and accurate descriptions of the cave. Perhaps in another 30 years, another group can return with better respirator technology and continue exploration. For now, Catana Matias holds its secrets.